Raw mechs are just flat out fun. Sealed Palace is an awesome fan-made sequel to Ocarina of Time. Return to Subcon takes the mechanics of SMB2 and explores them in a new and exciting way. Randomizers breathe new life into our classic favorites. But how do you play them? In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you get a ROM hack up and running on your own system. ROM hacks can be played on emulators like on your phone or on a computer, FPGA consoles like the Analog Pocket or a Mister, and also on original hardware using something like this, an EverDrive where you put your games on an SD card. The way these things work is that the creator of a ROM hack uses software to change aspects of the original game. So the first thing you're gonna to need to play the game is the ROM file of the original game. There are many different ways to do this. A quick Google search or something like that, just search the internet to find whatever game you're looking for. You can also do it by dumping the files from the original cartridge, but that's a little bit more challenging and requires some additional hardware to get that up and running. Once you've got the original ROM file of the game, you're actually gonna need a file from the creator of the ROM hack. ROMhacking.net is where you're gonna find a plethora of hacks for retro games and all sorts of great information. SMW Central is a great resource for Super Mario World ROM hacks. Feel free to drop some sites in the comments below of where you pick up ROM hacks and other resources that may help us out with this. The next step is really where the magic happens. Now that you have these two files, we need a way to put these things together to make them work as one game. You're going to combine the two files through a process called patching. There are many different ways you can do this. ROMhacking.net has a bunch of different programs you can use to patch. I actually just use their online tool and here's how it works. Before you jump into this process, just be aware that some hacks need a very specific version of the original game. So if there is that specification, make sure when you're doing your searches that you're getting the right version. First thing you need to do is select the original ROM file. Next, you will select your file from the creator of the ROM hack. As shown here, I'm pressing the patch button to complete the process. Okay, your hack is now ready to go. All you gotta do now is load up the ROM file on your emulator of choice or throw it on an EverDrive so you can actually play it on your console. There are so many different aspects to ROM hacking. There are people who actually create the tools to make ROM hacking possible. There are level designers, creators, editors, and all sorts of different things. A lot of ROM hacks are translations of old games that never came to the States here, from like Japanese to English and English to Japanese. There are so many different people involved in creating ROM hacks. And it's really awesome to see what the community has done to like breathe new life and, and create brand new games out of games that we know and love. If you're at all interested in this process, maybe you want to try it yourself. Maybe you want to create your own ROM hack. Head over to romhacking.net and they have a getting started page. It really goes over so many different things. There's a wonderful vocabulary section where you can see what all this stuff actually means, but then all the tools you might need or maybe some things that you might be interested in as a creator. I hope this video helps you out and that you have as much fun as I have had playing these things. Good luck and I'll see you in the next one.